gyro stabilization technology, particularly safe mode, is making it significantly easier for newcomers to the sport to quickly become successful independent solo pilots. Brand new and self-taught pilots are therefore wise to take advantage of training aircraft offering the safe mode option. Once flying has become enjoyable, confidence has set in, with an intact airplane, pilots who learned using SAFE can graduate to practicing conventional control techniques. Many of the people who enroll in FIRST RC Flight School, do so with the goal to transition from flying in SAFE mode, to flying using conventional control. With regard to the theory that flying in SAFE mode instills bad habits, particularly, holding in the aileron input to continue turning. In my experience, regardless of whether a pilot starts out with, or without SAFE, Having the correct understanding of the proper techniques is the key in either case. In the beginner safe mode, bank and pitch are typically limited to no more than 30 degrees, thereby limiting the plane to mild maneuvering. Most significantly, the airplane returns to an upright level attitude the instant the transmitter controls are returned to neutral. Other than running into obstacles, it is virtually impossible for a pilot to lose control in this mode. Climbs, level flight, and descents are primarily controlled using the throttle, with the option to use the elevator pitch control to make gradual attitude adjustments. When the throttle is set for level flight at half throttle, the plane will then return to level flight as soon as the elevator is neutralized. In safe mode, the airplane is essentially steered around the sky like a car. The pilot holds the aileron control stick in the direction that he or she wants the plane to go. The amount of aileron applied determines the degree of bank, and therefore how wide or tight the turn is. When the throttle is set for level flight, the stabilization technology will attempt to keep the turn level. That said, it may still be necessary to pull or hold in some up elevator to maintain a perfectly level turn throughout. To exit a turn, all one needs to do is let the aileron control stick return to neutral, and the plane will automatically return to wings level. Smaller course adjustments are performed by holding in a slight amount of left or right, and steering to the desired heading then simply neutralizing the control stick when the plane is tracking where you wish. In the beginner mode, takeoffs are performed using more than half throttle, and holding in some up elevator to pull the airplane up away from the ground. The higher throttle setting should cause the plane to maintain a steady climb. The climb angle is then fine-tuned with the elevator. And when the plane has achieved the preferred altitude, the throttle is set for level flight at half throttle. In safe mode, the aileron and rudder are electronically combined or mixed, enabling pilots to taxi and steer down the runway using the same right control stick they use when flying. However, the rudder and nose gear still work independently on the left control stick if you wish to steer with the left stick. To land, the power is reduced below half to initiate a descent. When the airplane nears the ground, the throttle is reduced, and up elevator is maintained to shallow the glide slope and smoothly touch down. For a variety of reasons, to perform a smooth touchdown each time, the amount of elevator will typically need fine tuning all the way to the ground. In the event a course adjustment is needed while holding an up elevator to level out to the ground, the aileron adjustment will need to be made while continuing to adjust the elevator. Switching to intermediate safe mode, allow slightly steeper bank and pitch angle limits to enable more nimble maneuvering. The auto level feature is no longer active, and therefore the plane is flown with conventional control techniques similar to those used to fly most airplanes. For example, once the plane has been banked into the turn, it will remain in that attitude. Furthermore, the gyro will not attempt to keep the turn level. Pilots must continue to pull and adjust up elevator to keep the turn level throughout. When the pilot wishes to finish the turn, he or she must input opposite aileron to level the wings and establish a straight line. Turns are started with a smooth, in-out, aileron input. Not held in. The size of the aileron input determines the size of the turn. A larger input produces a steeper bank and tighter turn. A smaller in-out input produces a shallower bank and a wider turn. Widening or tightening turns is accomplished by inputting a smooth small, in-out, aileron bump, while continuing to hold in and adjust the elevator to keep the turn level. 
minor course adjustments are performed using a brief, in-out, aileron input to bank the wing slightly, causing the airplane to gradually drift in the direction of the slight bank. When you wish to return to a straight line, opposite aileron will be required to return the wings to level. If the training plane is set up stock, the rudder and aileron are not mixed together in intermediate mode. Therefore, taxi and takeoff are performed using the left stick rudder control. The angle of the climb out will be controlled using the elevator. The plane will not automatically climb at higher throttle settings or assume level flight when the throttle is placed to half. So the pilot must establish level flight and affect altitude changes using a combination of throttle and elevator. During a landing approach, some power is maintained until the plane approaches the preferred touchdown point, at which time the power is reduced. The final approach slope is fine-tuned with the elevator. The landing flare consists of pulling slight elevator as the plane approaches within a few feet of the ground. The elevator is then continually adjusted to touch down smoothly. Any course corrections needed during the flare will have to be performed while continuing to hold in and adjust the elevator. Switching to conventional control experienced mode, removes any artificial bank or pitch limits. As such, the plane will do whatever the pilot tells it to do, whether right or wrong. The most important aspect of flying with conventional controls, is understanding that holding in the aileron will cause the plane to overbank, and enter a spiral dive. Turns are instead initiated with a smooth, in-out, aileron input to set a bank angle. The turn is then sustained and kept level by holding an up elevator. When you wish to exit the turn, the elevator is taken out, and opposite aileron is then applied to return the wings to level. Smaller course corrections are performed by smoothly inputting brief bumps of aileron to bank the wings slightly in the direction you want the plane to go. As long as the aileron is not held in, and thus the bank is only slight, the plane will typically not lose altitude during minor course corrections. If the course correction is a bit more, or the bump of aileron is a bit large, a small amount of elevator may be needed to keep the plane from losing altitude. When you wish to straighten out, a bump of aileron in the opposite direction will return the wings to level and thus the plane to a straight line. Note that if you hold in the aileron attempting to steer to a new heading, the bank will continue to steepen and cause the plane to descend, along with likely producing a much greater course correction than what was needed. As a rule, input one smooth bump of aileron at a time. It's better to make two separate bumps than to hold in the aileron. Taking off with conventional control entails steering with the rudder while holding an up elevator until the plane lifts off the ground. The elevator then needs to be lessened and adjusted to maintain a gradual climb out. If the pilot continues to hold in significant elevator after liftoff, they risk putting the plane into too steep of a climb and entering a stall. Landings consist of slowing the plane to initiate a gradual descent, and fine-tuning the angle of the descent with elevator. The motor is then reduced when there's a sense that the plane will land near the preferred touchdown point. Elevator is used to shallow the glide slope when the landing approach needs to be extended, as well as to flare to a smooth touchdown. Course adjustments during landing are performed using smooth bumps of aileron. Due to the plane's propensity to descend at slower air speeds, course adjustments must be coordinated with the elevator. Note, those using a programmable transmitter to fly their primary trainer, can significantly improve control by mixing aileron and rudder. Follow the link in the description to watch a video explaining the benefits of aileron-rudder mixing. In closing, veteran pilots who frown upon using safe stabilization technology, fail to consider that new pilots have the option to switch back and forth. When ready to make the switch, one can climb and turn off safe in order to practice conventional control, then turn it back on for landing. It usually isn't long before pilots successfully land the plane and realize they forgot to turn safe back on.